My theory for today is Professor Egad is from the Pikmin universe. I bet you're wondering how I'm gonna pull this out of my ass. Well, let's begin. First of all, his name is Professor Elvin Gadd. List of inventions include the Poltergust 3000, the Magic Paintbrush, the Flood, and the Vibe Scepter. Sus. Must have been a special request from the princess herself. Aside from those, he has also invented a time machine and portals. Also, he drives a car. On the subject of his inventions, he seems to be able to invent what appears to be sentient technology, meaning life to the lifeless. The power of the rat brings motion to the motionless. Hmm. Turbo troll. Which brings us to his abilities. Super intelligence, time traveling, teleporting, sentient gadgets, soul transference, merging science with magic. Now let me ask you, why would he be studying those kinds of things? To what ends? All part of my theory. Next, let's look at the Copites. Copites? Cop... Whichever. Excluding Alamar and Louie for being parallels to Mario and Luigi, Copite characters are as follows. Alpha is Alf. Bravo is Brittany. Charlie is Charlie. However, there was originally supposed to be a fourth team member. Delta Deleted D Captain, named loosely after the military alphabet. Elvin looks different from every other character slash race in the Nintendo universe except the Copites. If he were in fact a Copite, he would be Echo? Elvin Gat? Do I really think it's because they look similar? I mean, that's certainly a part of it. But I have more to offer still. If Elvin Gat had been part of the team, what would his role have been? Well. What does he do again? Oh yeah, he helps you bust ghosts. Examples, Booze and King Boo. Now that I think about it, I wonder if the painting levels in Mario 64 was his doing. That's a theory for another day. Professor E. Gad might have experience handling spirits from data found on the Plasm Wraith, Water Wraith, Smoky Prog, and maybe even the Mamuta. Suppose he was the scientist on the team that was tasked with figuring out how to combat the otherwise invincible ghost slash spirit enemies. That would explain why his main focus is ghost busting. There is even a crossover at multiple points between franchises. For example, see Super Mario Galaxy Space Junk Galaxy level where Captain Olimar's ship is part of the level. But look at the size difference. How can Mario and Olimar be relatively close to the same height in Smash Brothers, but be so different in proportion to the rocket? Well, what if there were instances of things growing and shrinking in size in the Mario universe? The Mario universe has shown numerous iterations of Giant Land, where the Pikmin games could have likely taken place, explaining why everything was gigantic and made them seem small by comparison. See also Giant Rob from the Olimar introduction scene in the Subspace Emissary in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. New Donk City from Super Mario Odyssey would explain the origin of things growing in the Donkey Kong related things via golden bananas as theorized by game theory. At the end of each world you come up against a boss. A boss mind you that just so happens to be a giga sized version of one of the normal enemies from the surrounding region. There's Master Necky Senior, Really Naughty, the Giant Bumblebee to name three. They're absolute giants relative to the size of everyone else. So that prompts the question. 
how did they get so big? Well, they all have one thing in common, the banana horde. And you might think that this is all just limited to the Donkey Kong universe, but it's not. The banana horde even appears in Super Smash Bros. Brawl's story mode, The Subspace Emissary, where Bowser, Bowser of all people, sends out a hammer bro and a Goomba to steal DK's bananas. In fact, we do know that these bananas possess magical properties. As seen in Donkey Kong Country Returns factory level, a tiki can come to life when a mashed up banana is incorporated into its body. This is further demonstrated with the final battle against Tiki Tong, where he turns the bananas into banana juice and uses it to transform his hands, making him stronger for the battle against the Kongs. So it is definitely possible that these bananas possess all sorts of properties, even to the extent of being the DKC universe's equivalent of Mario's super mushrooms, making things grow to enormous sizes. It's hence why the Donkey Kong Country universe humans are so much bigger than the Mushroom Kingdom residents like Mario. Hence why Mario is canonically 5'1", and all the people in that area are far taller. As a result, the mysteries behind the gradual giantism could be connected to the events and locations seen in the Pikmin games. Time travel would also be able to explain the professor being from the far future slash past, explaining the environments, junk being seen as treasures based on descriptions given to them by the Copites. Perhaps the lands and creatures from Pikmin are actually taking place in a version of giant land from the future or past. Professor E. Gad could have time traveled to the era of the Mushroom Kingdom, where upon meeting Princess Peach, became a royal scientist, probably to handle the boos and King Boo problem, leading to the connections with his inventions across the Mario universe. On another note, let me point out the Mario equivalent of Pikmin, the Toads. There are a vast variety of Toads in the Mario universe, and there are a variety of Pikmin in the Pikmin universe, color-coded similarly as well. And look at how each of them are used. Used as a weapon, check. Plant-based creature that lives to serve a leader. Check. Working together selflessly to fight back against the monsters, even if their own lives are at stake. Check. And in Luigi's Mansion 3, there is a section of the game where you, under the direction of Professor E. Gad, have to escort three different colored toads. And what a coincidence, but when you look at their colors of red, yellow, and blue, the cherry on top, you'll have to toss the toads exactly the same way you would toss the Pikmin to solve puzzles. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, okay. Oh. I can dig it! Toads are just a more evolved kind of Pikmin. So perhaps Egad is either retired and freelancing for Peach to fight ghosts and make useful inventions, or perhaps he is stuck on Mario's world and has been trying to find his way back home all this time, and is being aided by the princess with labor and resources in exchange for his assistance. With all that being said, what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and let me know. I'll see you dudes and dudettes in the next video. Bye!